Let's talk about the royals now, and specifically Prince Harry, who's um, going to make a whole bunch of excuses for his behaviour on ITV in a documentary this evening. It seems um, that's unlike Harry, isn't it, to obfuscate and not take personal responsibility for his own behaviour? That's never happened before. Um, so, look, here we go. The Duke of Sussex is blaming the tabloid press for his family breakdown. Of course he is. Prince Harry has been awarded hundreds of thousands of pounds in damages after a four-year legal battle, but he's told an ITV documentary that airs tonight it would be nice if the royal family had joined forces to take on the media together. Well, maybe he should have thought about that before he and his wife went on an attack of the royal family, a rampage, uh, throwing the family under the bus, making accusations, making jibes, uh, insinuating racism. I don't think that was the media. I think they were things that he and his wife actually said. The media, by the way, they tend to report things, particularly if it's about someone that is part of the most famous family on the planet. Um, well, joining me now to talk about this is Talks Royal correspondent Rupert Bell. Um, when would this man stop whinging that everything is somebody else's fault, Rupert Bell, or do you have some sympathy for him? Um, look, he's... At times you feel he's a troubled soul. This is his great mission, which is to take on the British press, because he is convinced all his problems have come for the way he's been treated over the years by the British media. Yet he has needed the media in his new life, but he wants everything on his own terms, and that's his problem. And when you look at what he's saying now, he's the one who did that Oprah Winfrey interview with his wife. He's the one who produces the book, which this is the dirt on his family and so no wonder the family want to distance themselves and feel that they can't trust him and this is another example that he's going onto this program once again to blame everybody else but at no stage do you ever feel that sometimes there are two sides to every coin it's easy just to blame everybody else but you know sometimes you might have been the catalyst to some of the problems and at times his lack of self-awareness i think is what frustrates and for the royal family they at the moment do not trust him. So if there is a rapprochement, which, you know, there are talks about him coming over, he wants to see his family, but they want it, the royal, rest of the royal family will very definitely want it on their terms because at the moment the lack of trust between the two sides is evident for all to see. But, but won't the royal family themselves be concerned about him kind of coming back into the fold, with or without Meghan? Uh, a, he'll probably be followed by a Netflix film crew. And secondly, anything that is said will be taken by him and no doubt form part of Spoiled 2 or Spare 2 or whatever the name of his silly book was. So, I mean, it, there's no way that the fat royal family are going to trust him ever again, surely? That is the problem. So it's a building bridges and they've got to believe that if they are, if there is going to be a rapprochement, that they can see that this is a man now who's changed and understands that what he's done hasn't been good for the relationship of all and sundry. And he's saying that he's missing his family. But Rupert, well, sorry, he's why, over why, now doesn't, in California. why doesn't he admit this then? Why doesn't he say on camera, because he loves a camera, uh, he loves a bit of media attention, why doesn't mm. he show some humility and say, look, I may have said things that I shouldn't have done, rather than everything being somebody else's fault, particularly the media, who are simply just reporting on the things that he says. And he indeed reporting on extracts from his book and and you know we've even seen situations in the past Rupert where he then denies the reports of the things that he himself has published in his own book I think that's wishful thinking at the moment um, I think his pride won't allow himself to apologize because even in this latest interview he th thinks he's beyond reproach that's why he's continuing his court battles he thinks he's got a, a case now he may have a case or two to answer for I don't know that will be for the courts to determine but ultimately it has to be him but I don't think his pride will allow himself and you know understanding and looking at the bigger picture it's all it's a very self-centered and my small world that he's now living in in California surrounded by Megan he hasn't got his close network of friends who might be able to have a gentle word in his ear and say come on Harry um, this is just not doing anyone good but he's lost his network of long-term friends because now which is fine he can go and have his new life over in California but that support network of trusted friends are no longer there and so I think that's the problem he's not got anybody else to sound off so when he's sitting in Montecito he basically you know becomes a ever in decreasing spiral of sort of con I'm not saying conspiracy theories but you know that in a way that the victim 
Mick feeling the victim. And every time you see him now, there used to be a smiling, happy Harry. Every time you now see him, and in this late interview, he looks, he's got the world upon his shoulders. Well, he shouldn't have the world upon his shoulders. He lives in a multi-million dollar house in California. He's got what he wanted. I'm not sure what he should be complaining well, he, about he's because the epitome, this is the life he's chosen. Yes, he's the epitome of privilege, yet he acts like a petulant child. As I guess most people that grow up in situations where they're spoiled act like. I mean, you, you, you talk about how he used to be uh, a, a normal, rounded, sensible, liked human being, but of course all that changed when he met Meghan Markle, didn't it? Um, it seems that was the big sea change. Now, look, people f he fell in love and definitely was happy as a result. But at the moment, what you just see now is that happiness seems now to have a bitter edge. And, you know, now not having his family around him, and I'm sure he's missing because, you know, William, you know, the, the Prince and Princess of Wales and, and Harry, there was, you know, they seemed like they all got on. So then once Meghan comes in, that breakdown, and now suddenly, you know, it's well, a long-term sort of deterioration of the relationship. And right now, it's at rock bottom and it is sad when you see a family uh, you know dis dis become as dysfunctional as this one is between harry and his brother and and his sister-in-law and it's just sad and you would want him to find a way but it's they are going to insist that it he has to somehow show some humility but unfortunately that may take may yeah, take it, some it, time for him look, to do it, that on a human level of course it's very very sad particularly given how close the brothers were and indeed you know losing their mother at a very very young age I mean, it's horrible it's tragic but you know what harry you're not the only person that's had trauma and aggravation in your life you know many of us have whatever that is and and it doesn't then give us the excuse into our 40s to be so spoiled so uh you know unhumble if you like uh in so far as the way that you act but then not only act in that aggressive way throwing your own family under the bus but they won't even have the gall to then you know admit that perhaps you are part of the problem or indeed the problem i, I suggest rupert that this isn't going to end until harry and Meghan are no longer together which i suspect probably eventually will be on the cards won't it um, I have no idea of the state of the marriage, but clearly, you know, there may be pressures going on. But, you know, they've got children. You'd hope they'd find, a, you know, that they are going to be happy. But with that happiness, if they can find a way in saying, right, we perhaps were, you did behave badly at times and have made it difficult. But it's not just Harry who's got to eat humble pie. Megan's also got to eat some humble pie, and I'm not sure that she is either in a position well, I, to go. She's even and say, less likely to. That doesn't seem to. Even less yeah, likely to. Exactly, and looking. Absolutely, and that seems to me to be the issue. They're both of them now going to prove to be very stubborn. You know, not, the Sussexes are not for turning, it would seem. <laughs> so that's going to be the, the problem. If they can find a way, you know, and actually say, look, it, it should be. Look, you've got his father's recovering from cancer. His sister-in-law is recovering from cancer. You know, you would have thought, you know, the sort of milk of human kindness here to actually say, right, we've got to sort this out. This is not good long term. We need our family coming back together. But at the moment, I don't think it's Harry, probably with the guidance of his wife, is not in a position at this stage to come to come a begging and saying, I'm sorry and I'll offer a bit of mea culpa here. But I, 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 I don't see, see that happening, happening in, in the short term. Rupert Bell, Talks Royal Correspondent. Thank you very much indeed.